recording okay with everybody? I think it's okay. But oh, uh, is yeah. any objection out there with recording? Okay. Um, Thank sounds, you. It seems okay. So we can start recording. Yeah. And I'm I just want to mention in the beginning um, that I I have to leave um, on the top of the hour today. I have some personal commitment, uh, but Ines will be there to continue. And um, so to start with, um, I just uh, I know that we are uh, today we don't have uh, any uh, special topic, but we will go through the regular uh, status update. And if anyone has anything um, else to discuss regarding the new IoT groups in IOT, in IETF or um, you know outside where we need to pay attention to, um, that would be great. Um, but first we will go um, quickly with the updates. Um, and before then, since Eric Hinke, our responsible AD, is also on the call, I just would like to um, say um, to Eric, if you have any anything that you would like to say to this group for the pre-meeting, um, it might be uh, it might be good to share right now. Okay, no, nothing specific to say, and thank you for the invitation. Thank you for participating. And I've seen recently many more IoT directorate reviews of draft, which is very, very helpful. So thank you for people doing this. It's, it's really uh, helpful. Thanks. And that's it, basically, for me. Okay, great. So, uh, in it, then maybe we can start with the um, status update. So, um, yeah, and who, uh, we can uh, start with the first working group or in the code EMD. Um, yes, uh, Sixtish. Please, there is someone from Sixtish? Thomas? Yes, uh, but there is no news. I mean, we all the documents that the group produced are now waiting in the RFC interview which is uh, locked, you know, cluster 310 is being locked by two or three documents, one from core and two from role. So once those documents are passed, then all the 60-ish documents will be published as well. And 60-ish will be pretty much done. So I expect that we'll close the working group. Okay. Thank you very uh, much, Pascal. Yes. And the core Any document question? is the core document is uh, um, stateless. The stateless document is is um, um, undergoing its last uh, fixes for the IESG review um, now. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Uh, six log. There is someone from Six Law, Charles Sueta. Yes, so Carlos here. Uh, Carlos. So in, in Six Law, overall, the working group status hasn't changed uh, significantly since the last ATF. Uh, most working group documents are at very advanced stages and still progressing, and there's there has not been much new work. So in more details, uh, there are five documents currently in the RFC editor queue. Um, four of them are in all 48 already. This is the address protected label discovery, backbone router, and the two fragmentation drafts. And there is uh, the other one, which is not in all 48, is the deadline time draft. All these uh, documents belong to cluster 310. Then there's one document in ISD evaluation, which is IPv6 over NFC. And then there are three other active working group documents, uh, quite advanced as well. Uh, publication has been requested for IPv6 mesh over BLE. Also, IPv6 of the PLC has passed working group last call, and there's uh, there has been a second working group last call for the six low use cases draft. Uh, 
And there's one individual draft at initial stages about the use of chic header compression in six low environments. And there's currently an open poll on which is the working group opinion on a draft entitled Design Considerations for Low Power Internet Protocols, where the authors had approached the independent submission editor. This document uh, provides some measurements about memory footprint and interoperability of different six low pan implementations and provides also some design guidelines. So that would be it from six law. Carles, if I may say, the, the four documents that you mentioned that are in Auth48 are actually uh, out of Auth48, but uh, the RFC editor has asked the responsible ADs to uh, make a final review pass to ensure that the changes that were done during uh, Auth48 are, are okay. So Auth48 is complete. We are really close to, to publication. Yeah, I think it's actually all three eight done or something like that, the, the actual status. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Carlos and Pika. Additional questions? No. Okay, from Ace, Daniel, or someone that can provide some information. I have to find it and mute button. So for the ACE working group, um, we are revising the OS code profile. Um, we're moving on the group communications and um, MQTT is almost uh, close to be sent to the ISG. So that's where we are. Okay, thank you very much, Daniel. Um, questions? Thank you for um, the help up there. Yes. Um, yeah, Ines um, and everybody. Um, I uh, I um, I think we probably should um, spend one minute of silence for Jim Shah. Um, I think that would be appropriate. Um, oh yes. Yeah. We're, Shall we um, take one minute from now and uh, just pay respect to for Jim Shad? Thank you. So one minute starts now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Samita. Okay, we can go with the ISPF. Michael? Michael? Or Niklas? Hi. Uh, yeah, so uh, we will, we're officially a working group, and ADASDF is officially a working group. We'll have our first official virtual intro meeting on. Monday at 1800 UTC, uh, we've issued an adoption call for the uh, base document, and we will meet at IETF 109, um, and as proposed in the charter, there's an approximately kind of uh, month or two uh, cadence for the effort between revisions of the document and running code. That's great. Thank you, Michael. Questions? No? Okay. Sibor, Francesca? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, since uh, last uh, ITF, we continued the uh, working group bi weekly interims. Um, we have recently rechartered to work on, the, on CDDL extension, so it was a minor rechartering. Um, we have two documents in the RFC editor queue, the Seaboard tags for date, which is in uh, Auth48 and the 7049 piece. 
um, which is great success. And we have a working group last call for the TAGSOID document, which started yesterday and ends, ends in two weeks. Um, and yeah, and then we are progressing the rest of the documents. Great. Thank you very much, Francesca. Some questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, Cor, Jaime, or Marco? Hi, Marco here. Uh, we have two documents in ISG review uh, and we are processing their comments. Uh, this is the resource directory and stateless, the document mentioned before by uh, Pascal and Michael. Two more are in ID review, also processing their comments. And we have the four core conf documents under Shepard write up. So we expect to request for publication soon. Group of score also passed working group plus call and will submit soon a version uh, addressing the comments. Uh, we've had four interims since ITF uh, 108, mostly to address those ISG uh, review comments and on advancing uh, other documents. Uh, we'll meet at ITF 109 and at the Hackathon we plan to run uh, more tests for group of score. That's all from my side. Great. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Marco. Uh, Thank there you. Is some questions? You're quite active. Um, thank you. So there will be a hackathon. I, I'm reading the Code MD notes um, in IoT, in IETF 109, right? Um, so uh, this hackathon is only um, anybody, any other groups are joining, any other IoT groups are joining other than Cole in the hackathon for IoT? Well, there are some planned tests also for ACE. And Anima. Oh, okay. Anima. Okay. Yeah, and then maybe Anima, uh, student it... deep. Okay. Anima is probably part, not part of the IoT directorate, is it? No. Two days. Okay. Thanks. Um, uh, Kose, Matt, and Ivalo. Ivalo. There is someone or someone can provide some information. Okay, Detnet or low? Hi everyone, Jano speaking. Um, since uh, we are new uh, to the director, uh, we, we tried to uh, give a, uh, not just an update, but a full picture uh, with Lou. Uh, so uh, we have uh, two kinds of, uh, of, of documents, I would say uh, major ones uh, and, uh, and quite uh, upcoming new work. Uh, the working group uh, has already published uh, three RFCs, one on architecture, one on problem statement, and one on use cases. And uh, we call a few uh, of a further working group documents as, as core drafts of the working group, which are now really getting to publication. Uh, the, the core data plane drafts are uh, at the RFC editor queue. Like, uh, if you've been following that net, uh, one uh, 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 update recently is that the uh, .NET MPLS and the uh, IP over MPLS uh, data plane drafts just got into the RFC, uh, RFC editor queue. Uh, and um, the last uh, uh, core data plane draft, the MPLS over UDP IP is, is getting there soon, uh, as well as our security draft and the flow information model. Uh, we have three more uh, data plane drafts uh, uh, all related to the time sensitive networking uh, interactions, and uh, these uh, just post uh, working group last call. Uh, we also have a Yank uh, working group document, which is we are hoping uh, wrapping up soon. We just had an interim meeting uh, dedicated to this document, the Yank work, to, to foster and accelerate. And um, in the last bullet uh, lists the sort of newer, not so major uh, work items. 
Uh, we have work ongoing on the OEM um, dedicated to IP separate and to MPLS and just a uh, OEM framework document is coming up, uh, uh, which is a relatively uh, new uh, document, not working group document yet actually, but individual draft. Uh, the working group also have a, docu a document on boundary latency, how to address that. Uh, update is coming for this upcoming ITF. And uh, we hope that it uh, gets um, progressing uh, uh, as well. And a very new one is the control plane uh, uh, drafts uh, that uh, came in via rechartering recently, uh, mid this year. Uh, that is a control plane framework, uh, a strong candidate to working group adoption soon. And a new one just uh, uploaded an individual contribution signaling. I would say that's it in brief. Any questions? I have a question, Yanis. Thanks for the update. And this yes. is the first um, uh, pre IETF meet, IOT directors meeting um, for DetNet um, because um, we, uh, DetNet, joined uh, IOT directorate recently. Um, do you recommend um, any of these uh, drafts that you mentioned um, should go through uh, IoT directorate review because they might have some impact for IoT area? Or maybe you can give a very brief update on um, how, um, you know, where we have some intersection between the you know general IoT related work in in this IoT directorate group and DeepNet, so people probably can relate and go take a look. Yeah, so I, I guess I would suggest to start to open up the use cases, which which includes uh, several use cases, and there is um, industrial IoT uh, machine to machine. It's called machine to machine there. Uh, for example, so so if you you can you can uh, take a look and that's the good start uh, on taking a look on what uh, we have been aiming for or we are aiming for, and um, the architecture RFC is also a useful very based document over for over uh, for that net for an understanding uh, of the work and um, uh, what I might uh, well it's um it's hard to down select really what is exactly iot i mean for example just thinking of these tsn related drafts uh, tsn is uh, a strong candidate for uh, industrial iot uh, factory automation mm -hmm. and so on so so that that is uh, relevant and uh, and comments would be absolutely welcome if 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 uh, if anybody checks uh, uh, that I that's I guess what what I would uh, call out right now. There are quite various use cases we are addressing, so that uh, makes uh, it a little bit difficult to 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 scope what is so much focused on IoT. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I think the use case probably is good um, draft to begin with, and uh, yeah, and also you rightly pointed to TSN. Um, so because of the relevance for industrial IoT. Um, so thank you. Thank yes, you th thank much. you, thank you, thank you. We can go to the next one, Ines Lake. Malisa or Stephen? Yeah, hi, this is Malisha. So on the lake side, we will be meeting during Monday of the IETF week. We have a two hour session uh, scheduled. Since the last IETF meeting, we did not have major changes. Authors were busy working on the ad hoc issues on the GitHub page and opening some of the issues there, but we did not see much discussion on the list. So we will be discussing during the meeting how to restart these discussions on the list uh, during the meeting. So that would be all on my side. 
Okay, thank you very okay, much, I Marisa. Think Blake is new this time, Ines, um, or Malisha. Is no. LA added recently? This is your first PIETF meeting? Oh, no, no, it's not. I mean, we've been, we've been around not? for quite okay. a while. No, no, it's not. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for my mistake. I thought Lake was new to IoT Directorate Group this time, but thank you for the reminder. Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, LWIG Mohit or Sen? One know what is the status? Oh, wait. You said something else. Oh, L okay. Yeah, L IG. Louis, Louis, yeah. Louis. Uh, do you know, Michael, what is going on in? I know there's some activity with the ah. constraint ESP, um, but like that's the only activity I've seen in the ages. I think that's just some kind of review happening. Alice, can you say something about the TCP work? Yeah, yeah I was going to this one. <laughs> so, yeah, one of the uh, LWIC uh, documents is currently in ISG. And, well, uh, there's uh, one discuss at the moment. So uh, we just updated the, the draft uh, this morning. And, well, let's see if uh, we can clear the last discuss. That's for TCP guidance in IoT environments. Thank you very much, Carlos. Um, um, some other questions for? Okay. And um, LP1, Alex or Pascal? So uh, LP1 is progressing two documents at, the, at this moment. One of them is uh, check the check compression over LoRa. And this one is going through uh, ISG review, and well, we just passed ITF last call, and mm, uh, ID review, right? Well, we are in that phase. And and the other one is um, the chic over co-ops. That's the one which is uh, more interesting at this moment because we um, so we passed the, the the ISG review stage, and and we found one major comment about the architecture because the compression happens. Uh, twice, really, once uh, to compress the IPv6 UDP and the outer uh, co-op. And then uh, if COSI is being used, then the inner uh, application objects, which can be protected by, by COSI, uh, may be protected be between different endpoints, meaning that the compression and the compression happens between different endpoints. So this is why we had to look at this with uh, a lot of care. And uh, the new version of the document, which addresses this architecture change, uh, are now ready. So we expect to go through the rest of the ISG review quite soon. So the uh, chic of our of our chic serving co-op, including COSI, uh, will be ready soon. And that's pretty much. Great, great. We, we are progressing other documents, but they're still in the working work for for um, other media. That's uh, chic for. Um, LT uh, and Chic for uh, Sigfox. We also push Chic for over PPP to the Internet Area Working Group. I don't know if somebody will talk about that, but at the moment the Chic over PPP is done by Interior. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Pascal. Questions? No. Okay. Brad, Kathleen, Nancy, or Beth. Someone can provide some feedback, but anyway, we have information here. Can you guys see me? Yes. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> Hi. Nancy. So, um, we have several documents that have been adopted. Um, the architecture one, um, we put out a document uh, last fall. Um, and it's 
Yes. Kathleen, mm -hmm. um, uh, we, oh, we cannot hear you very well. Or it's me, maybe. No, it's my WebEx. Is this any better? Yes. Okay. Better. Yeah. Um, okay. So the architecture is in working last call. Um, I think it closes on the 16th of November. Um, the second draft, which is the profile for TPM based network device attestations completed its first round of um, last call. There were several comments received. Um, the authors have updated the draft, so we're just waiting to get confirmation um, whether all those comments have been resolved um, for us to figure out if we're ready for for um, publication request. The EAT draft, which is actually the first draft standard draft for um, the token claims, uh, it's still progressing. There's still a lot of discussion there. I'd like to see it progress faster, but um, it is what it is. The next draft is a TPM based Yang model um, challenge response means of doing attestation. Uh, we issued a, an early um, Yang doctor review. Uh, it's a little bit late. Well, not a little bit too late. So until we get that, um, we're not quite ready to do the working group last call. Uh, I think Eric is trying to schedule a, um, a call with Mahesh just to accelerate that process. Interaction models was adopted at the last ITF 108. Um, so we're still awaiting more reviews to see its level of maturity. And then there's, um, I just listed the, the, the other drafts that haven't been adopted yet, um, but are under consideration. That's it. We'll have two sessions. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nancy. Yeah. Questions for rats? No. Okay. For roll, we will have <clears throat> two hours in the ITF one zero nine, and the documents active right now is a uh, use of Ripple info. I think we are ready to go back to the SG, and at the same time, so we are aligned with the turn on documents and unawareerly unawareerly and now unawareerly is in a, a direct review and then as well probably will be aligned with the MPC and MPDAO that is an RPC editor queue. So these uh, four documents are now very active and we hope to get them done soon. Enrollment priority we have a recently a new version so we are working reviews and a shepherd document and how the ripple is uh, we are uh, in a uh, uh, direct evaluation and we are uh, hoping to fulfill all the comments from the 80 from the authors capability and mopex are in progress and in the extension we just have a new review uh, addressing the comments from the shepherd and uh, we hope to submit it for 80 and as well we are preparing topics for the ripple version 2 so I think uh, that's going to be one of the topics for the idea of 109. Thank you. Any questions on roll? People are really quiet this time. Okay. Thanks, Ine. Thank you. Maybe Ines, it could be interesting to, to mention that we have started the discussions on uh, what changes we would like to make and uh, in Ripple to to build Ripple V2, and which new function would belong to Ripple V2, which ones would be eliminated, uh, things like that. Yes, what, uh, we, we just started the discussion. Yeah, in the interim things. So we have started the GitHub control and we are collecting the topics that we want to address for this new version. And as well, we 
have to review the 6550 and uh, find out this a future work or and what of this future work we can address in this uh, version two and what's going to be the things that are going to make obsolete as well. But of course, we have to uh, review the uh, interoperability. Interoperability. The cop I want to get in this new version. Yes. Thank you. Do you want to add um, some? I am. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Go ahead. Sorry uh, for interruption. I know. I just uh, want to ask Pascal if he want to add some other information, but uh, it's fine. Please. Uh, no, we just that um, the, that there are a number of interesting functions in Ripple v2. Ripple v1 was was mostly the distance vector, the standard you know the distance vector protocol like a, an NGP as usual. Uh, with AODV on the one hand and uh, the rod projection on the other hand, we are adding. Um, for the first one, a reactive operation, and for the second one, uh, an SDN operation. So that means that uh, for Ripple V2, we'll have the capabilities to be uh, all, all the um, colors uh, of, of routing protocols from reactive to centralized routing, all within the same Ripple type of operation. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you. Yeah, you you partially answered my question. I was um, I was going to ask um, if you could explain the differences between Ripple V2 and uh, Ripple current Ripple version one. So I, I think some, uh, I am not closely following, but I would be. This would be probably then. This would benefit um, probably. Many people in this um, meeting to see what what is the why do we need Ripple V two I mean what problems are we going to fix Yeah, that is the thing that we are that, uh, de defining now, so we don't have a specific yeah. uh, we just have set the point. But at some point, it would be nice to do probably some tutorials or something and just show you which is the difference, so we can get feedback on what you think. So we will need like I think feedback from. The others. So IoT work. I, I, I think that we've been calling it Ripple V2, but you know, it's not really a version two. It's an RFC 6550 bis at some point mm -hmm. where we collapse it all and we perhaps might even get to internet standard. Maybe. Yes, that's that's more correct. That's exactly how I see it as well. Uh, note that the Ripple V1 was made made for a green field. There was nothing to to no art to live with. Um, but now, as we build those Ripple networks, we find that it's hard to evolve them because we don't have functions like uh, capability negotiation or dynamic activation of features. So um, it's very hard to add anything new in the field as the protocol stands. It's kind of fixed. So mm -hmm. part of, of the drafts that we have now and we want to integrate in Ripple V2 are capability negotiations and um, for instance, if you deploy a new software, it takes time. So you want the software to be deployed, but not activated. So at some point you need a way to activate that new feature. So we want to add this sort of capabilities, which were not existent in the original repo. And then there are things in the original repo that nobody ever used that we want to, to kind of remove as we uh, remove as we go to internet stand. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That makes sense. There is this draft of capabilities and MOPEX that explain that too. So, um, yeah. Thank you. More questions? Okay. Chris, Dave, David, Russ? Uh, yeah, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, there are three working group documents and two non-working group documents I'll talk about. The top one is the architecture for suit. This one is on the IESG telechat for next week. Uh, should be considered stable. The next one is the document that has the information model and threat model. Uh, this is also in the IESG. It already went through AD review, which raised some comments. 
a new doc was posted two days ago. And at that point, the IETF working group, the IETF last call began. And so this is currently an IETF last call. Uh, the next one is the one that is actually the implementable one, which is the manifest. This one is still in progress, but it is close to working group last call. Um, and I expect a new draft will be posted by the internet draft deadline. That's what the main focus of the working group is completing that one. And that leads me to the next non working group document um, at IETF 108. The content that is now in draft Moran suit report was part of suit manifest. And the IATF 108 discussion was to split it out of there because it was brand new content into there and we were trying to get the document to working group last call. So we split the document so that the suit manifest could go to working group last call after the split. Well, suit report could uh, continue being discussed because the content was new. And so that one is uh, still going on discussion. And the whole point of creating that one was again to make the suit manifest be able to go to working group last call after the version is posted at this uh, uh, deadline on Monday. Uh, and then the last one is the MUD use with suit. And that one was discussed at 108. It was brand new right before 108. And uh, there was some discussion about what's the right to the home for it. And at 108, we decided that suit would probably be the right home. And so we expect a follow up discussion on that one. But since that one has some of the same authors, I don't know if this one is going to be updated again by Monday. I haven't heard. So I don't know if Hannes, if you know, but uh, I expect this one will continue discussion in the working group. You can ask Brenton. Yeah. So unless there's any questions, Thanks. that's it for suit. We're, we're only meeting for one hour at, uh, at IETF 109. Thank you very much, Dave. Question? OK. Thank you. Deep, Nancy, Hiro? Uh, yeah, so for T, uh, we're also meeting only for one hour in IETF 109. We have three active documents. Um, Dave, I'm presuming you're getting close to finishing the architecture and the transport. Um, uh, yeah, one... the transport was uh, published earlier this month. And so, and, and the AD confirmed, well, I, my belief is that the, <laughs> uh, that the transport is done. Okay, I, I haven't been tracking all the emails closely, um, but I thought I saw some interactions. Anyway, um, I think once the arch architecture and the, the transport ones are complete, we can um, start the submission request for publication for both the architecture and, and the transport draft. There's been activity um, by the authors, and Dave, I'm assuming Akira will become an author in the protocol draft. Um, He's already currently listed as a protocol uh, as an author so. and the draft to be posted, yeah. correct? Yeah. Um, so I suspect we'll be having discussions for that draft um, and expect that in the IETF 109, we'll see if we're ready to do another working group last call on it, not another, a working group last call on it. Um, and then we can move forward on that one too. And that's it. Great. Thank you very much, Nancy. Um, questions for Deep? No, okay. Um, yeah, uh, we have here um, Tintosis Research Group, Ari Karsten. Well, anyway, there is like a, the work done here is going to be from uh, it's going to be from 1DM work to ASDF. Uh, there's going to be hackathon at ITF 109, and they're going to continue the work after that. So yes, some additional information. Yes. I see Karsten there. Yes. Okay. okay. I was going to say the same thing that, that Ines already said. So we, we've pretty much focused on, on getting the, the collaboration with 1DM uh safely shipped to the asdf working group which is now spun spun up uh, so at ietf 109 we will only do the the hackathon uh probably also with uh, sdf related uh work and uh, we will start doing a, a broader 
set of subjects. We, we have many, many drafts uh, that we should be looking at next, for instance, uh, the, the whole IoT edge uh, computing discussion. And we will do that after IETF 109. So what is um, in your mind or the working group's mind uh, for the edge? Uh, could you give us a little hint? Um, is it APIs um, or maybe more uh, data 1DM type of work for the core? It, it's not yet as concrete yet. So right now there there is a document that that describes the the area and and uh, describes some some structure uh, for the area, mm -hmm. and we want to finish that report uh, next. So we we are we are not doing protocols. We are doing uh, uh, reports that that summarize uh, research and interact with uh, those people who are doing this uh, research. So that that's the edge uh, work. But we also have other things on, on, on the plates. Thank you. Questions for Karsten? OK, thank you. I'm going. Um, Definitely if Marie Jose. No one? Someone is uh, aware of what's happening, Coin? No? Okay. Rao, Rick, if? No one? So someone is aware of what's happening in Rao? Yes. Um, <clears throat> um, so. There are a number of uh, documents which were adapted. You know, you know, RAW is not uh, designed to to produce standard tracks document. The the charter is only for uh, informational, and um, the first informational documents were adapted last month, and they are related to the use case. So we have a, a use case document. Uh, and they're related to technologies. So we have one generic technology document, which uh, covers 5G, covers LDAX, that's a, a link that's defined for aviation. Um, then we have uh, 6-dish and Wi-Fi 6-7. So those four technologies are uh, all described with the uh, uh, same similar skeleton, who describes them, uh, which standard doc, uh, standard body, um, what kind of kind of capability, and in particular, uh, row related capabilities like can you schedule this this link? And uh, so then we have uh, a third document on technology, which is one which is very specific to LDAX because that's a technology that uh, people are not very well used to. So so we have that one. Um, that's. Uh, I, there is a, there is an interesting one on 5G as well, which is uh, actually um, published by uh, Janos Group, and uh, I don't know that there was a call for adoption for that one yet. Janos, maybe you can tell us on that. So, so Pascal, we we have rolled that in into the technologies draft. So, so the standalone will just age out and. Uh, oh, okay. And that text is, oh, yes. yes. Because the LDAX one continues, because they wanted to to give us more information that than the general uh, the formatted information that the technology document has. Um, okay, so I was not sure whether you wanted to continue on that with the five G. So, so for Wi Fi and six and six dish, we don't have a separate document. Everything is uh, in this technologies document. So use case LDAX and and technologies are the ones that are progressing right now. There is there is a personal submission for the architecture and uh, framework. Um, now the content is not fully agreed on by uh, the group, and the document was not called for adoption yet. That's pretty much all I know. Maybe one more thing to add: uh, the OEM work is, oh, is uh, progressing. Yeah, true. 
So the, so the OEM work, which started in parallel at row and 60 ish, and, uh, and I'm sorry, that now, um, now the split has been done differently, and some of the row. OAM, which was common to DeathNet, has moved into the debt network. That's how I understand it. So yes, yes, yes. It's very specific to row, which is very cool. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Mm. Do you know if that uh, this working group is, is have uh, some uh, relation or some connection, some documents with the G six G IP? Mailing list that is in our working group. There is no relation that I know of between those two. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Pascal and Janos. Uh, so there is a new proposed working groups, IoT operations, IoT ops. So the chairs uh, proposed are Alex, Alexei, and Hank. There is someone of you, Alexei, Hank, here. Uh, I don't see either of them, but it's Rob Wilton here, so I can probably speak a bit more about this. Um, and those chairs haven't been confirmed yet. That was just some names we put in some ideas. Um, so the idea here of IoT Ops uh, Working Group is to almost have like, like a MOPS-like discussion place for discussing um, IoT things, uh, uh, operational issues related to IoT. Um, it is worth pointing out that this idea of having all this sort of working group has been around in the ICG for quite a while. Um, and this is our effort of trying to drive that forward now. There's still discussions in the ISG as to exactly what shape this working group should take. Um, so the chart that you've got there that you that that's pointed to is before the latest discussions that happened yesterday in the ISG. So it is changing shape a little bit from what's there to be more focused like MOPS, more on discussion. Um, it will potentially work on informational documents describing uh, problems and maybe requirements um, related to managing um, IoT networks uh, and and other IoT operations. The other side of it is sort of, like, is sort of onboarding uh, related work. But the current plan is that it doesn't do any protocol work, that um, it was already envisaged, envisaged that the protocol work would go to other working groups where possible already exist. Uh, but at the moment, it looks like it's hardening to saying we won't do protocol work in IoT ops and it will just do uh, this sort of informational documents and potentially if work does come in there to dispatch it to other existing working groups, create new ones as required. So um, on the current charter, it's suggesting that it would pick up the MUD documents from OPS AWG uh, and the brisky work from Anima. Uh, the current plan is is for that not to happen. So, so there's two things going on. Well, there's one thing at the moment going on is this sort of discussion in the ISG as to getting the shape of this working group right. And then the plan was to then have more discussion on this IoT ops. Uh, list we created to actually work on the charter. It may be that we try and do both of those in parallel, but with the uh, with the warning that the the shape of the working group might change depending on what the uh, other members of the ISG think. Does that make sense? Any questions related to that? I don't know if Warren wants to add anything to what I've been saying there. Uh, yeah, yes, please. That would be good. <clears throat> so yeah, um, this is still you know fairly early days for this sort of um, discussion. The charter was. Well, the charter text that was put in was sort of very much drafty text. Um, as Rob said, the idea was that this would be something very similar to MOPS. I'm not sure if folk are familiar with the MOPS working group. Um, it's for media operations, and it's almost sort of like a special interest group where people who are interested in media operations can gather and sort of discuss how things work, their findings, etc. This is a very new type of thing for the IETF. Um, we, in fact, I think that MOPS, in fact, MOPS is the only current working group like that. And it doesn't really fit into our generally understood idea of, you know, a working group which gets together and writes documents and focuses on document creation. Um, so we've been having a bit of a tricky time explaining this concept in the IESG. And that's why the charter is very drafty and is still changing. Um, <clears throat> what we had envisaged is there's a huge chunk of work in the IETF which is, is related to IoT type stuff. Um, but it's often hard for especially newcomers or people outside the IETF to understand where 
that work fits in, like how it all interrelates, how you can take work that we've done and sort of plug it together, uh, what experiences people have had using it, that sort of thing. Um, and so the hoped for idea was to be able to have sort of a venue where people can get together and just discuss this, um, you know, what they've learned, how things work, that sort of thing. Um, again, we don't really have an easy way to have that type of group within the IETF currently. And so a lot of the back and forth has been, you know, what would this sort of group look like? How do we have groups that do that sort of thing? And that's why um, we've mostly been having discussions amongst ourselves, um, you know, myself and Rob, and trying to sort of figure out how we can share this um, first with the ISG to make sure that the structure can be understood, and then with the rest of the IETF and, you know, IOTDER and all the working groups that are involved in, in this sort of work. Um, so hopefully that explains a little bit more about what the thought process was and how we've got here. Um, you know, this is not a secret thing or anything. It's more just a how do we build working groups which can discuss um, things, not quite as much work on documents. Uh, I, this is Barry Lee. I'd like to add to it. The uh, yes, please. One one of the issues is people come to the IETF and say, "Who's where are we working on IoT things? I don't see anything IoT related here." I have an IoT thing I want to bring to the IETF. With something like this, they now know where to take it, and that group's job is to figure out the best way to get it through our process. Yes, exactly what Barry said. Thank you for saying that in a much more sane and coherent manner than I managed. I understood Barry very well, but I don't know what MOPS does, so that analogy was was lost on me. Like, I don't even uh, know what the media operation is. So, yeah, media... Um, MOPS was at a bunch of IETF meetings in the past. There had been sort of five meetings where people who are involved in streaming media and sort of broadcast media would get together and chat. Um, and they met a bunch of times and they have some sort of unique sets of requirements for the network. Um, and MOPS was a sort of group created so that they could get together and actually Eric is Eric Fink is on the call. He can talk about it. It was his idea and he had to organize it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and, and basically Barry wanted, uh, sorry, go ahead. This came out of people may have heard of the GGIE uh, uh BOF proposals that never got approved and side meetings that happened. The the idea was to uh, to discuss requirements for making a better user experience for streaming media. And uh, now uh, Eric can take it from there. Yeah, so, and GGIE was even before the site meeting, so it was not really a big, but, but the point is that video, for instance, is touching not only networking, but also transport. It's touching multiple areas, pretty much like IoT, by the way. And once the protocol has been designed and deployed, uh, we still need to understand how to best deploy them or to best combine different uh, IETF protocols. So it was not only about chatting, it was really discussing and sharing experience there. And how it works, that's mainly presentation at the MOPS. And by the way, there's a MOPS interim in two hours today. So you may want to join just to get a taste of it, uh, even if you don't really participate. And one of the points of this is not only to share experience, but also getting people, I mean, in a real physical meeting, hey, uh, this looks interesting for me, I will go there and basically learn about new things. Uh, of course, it's not that fun here uh, with everything which is virtual, so you don't drop in in a room by accident, right? And you cannot attract people, but it's basically sharing experience, which is kind of new with the ITF. I mean, we still have, of course, DNS ops and, and others, but the sharing experience. So does this somewhat make sense to people? And I'm assuming there's going to be a bunch of questions. As I say, this was still very early days and we we're trying to figure out what sort of structure could work before sharing it more broadly. Um, 
but that seems to have possibly not worked out the way we thought, and it instead created some confusion and consternation. Okay, thank you very much for all your feedback over IoT Ops. Yeah, so this is Hank. Uh, um, I have a, a procedural question here. Um, um, and this is just very carefully a phrase, I assume. Um, when we, uh, uh, so there are decisions to be made. And these decisions are made, uh, uh, for example, and that is very apparent, not using the list. And that is a deliberate decision. That is fine, I assume. Um, so what, what my question here is, if you need input um, I think this has to be very carefully orchestrated. I mean, we can do it in this scope, we can do it in other scopes, but I, my assumption is, um, for example, the, the, the notions of this is less uh, about protocols, for example, is a little bit uh, surprising, maybe. And of course, now my doorbell rings, this fun in home office all the day. And uh, so um, so maybe maybe uh, getting uh, planning how to get input if there are questions or interesting ideas to be tested in, in, in some scopes. It doesn't have to be, I don't know, the high old IDF. Um, um, that could be considered here, maybe. Yes. Okay. I mean, I think that our... Our thing was first we wanted to make sure that you know we could even form a group like this that's mainly discussion based. Um, part of the, I mean, I guess it's it's this is probably well known. Um, the idea of having something IoT related has been kicking around in the IETF for many, 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 many years. Um, but the concern has often been that. Because IoT itself is so poorly defined, like what exactly an IoT is, um, there's been concern about, you know, what all is the scope, and that's been going back and forth. And there's been some um, sort of concern or confusion about how one makes sure that the scope covers what we intend it to. Um, I don't know if that made sense or not. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, the, so, the so list is created now, so we should have more discussion on it. So, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. I, um, I was a little bit um, distracted. Um, um, I think the, the question of intent has its own scope. So, so, so shaping scope after intent, while, while still shaping the scope of intent, is like, I don't know, uh, somehow circular, I think, isn't it? Or, or is this just what I just uh, perceived in them, and it's a misconception? No, there, there is something definitely to what you say. Um, the problem is that a bunch of needs to be a set of sort of agreements and negotiations to make sure that um, this doesn't end up overstepping its scope. Um, but I think sort of it still goes back to the initial idea was, is even such a thing possible? Um, I suspect maybe this is a, you know, we should have this discussion more on the list and go back and forth. Um, I'm trying to come up with a, or Rob and I are trying to come up with a sort of updated version of what we might think might possibly be a workable charter. And we should probably share that with the list to make sure that people have a reasonable understanding. What we didn't want to do is we didn't want to um, first share all of this with the list and get people's hopes up that you know we might be able to form a group that does this and then later run into the fact that you know the rest of the IETF doesn't want to charter something which isn't strictly within our normal structure of working groups. Maybe that so, answers so it this Hank again. Uh, okay, so, so this is Hank again. Um, so I was under the assumption that uh, the, the, the LACMOS test was already done and that there is interest. So I assume that is the whole motivator here. And um, so assuming that uh, um, I, uh, this, 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 this chartering is now happening something else. So typically what you would do here is assess the interest, I think, and then uh, and then have this very loud and broad and maybe even lengthy discussion. But if you want to streamline that, um, I think that doesn't change the assumption, doesn't it? So I think the assumption still remains that this is uh, somehow required. And and if that is in question, um, my, my, 
that they should be tested again. We need maybe you need another lacmos test with the, with the things that had happened. Uh, one sec. Now, now my doorbell is going off. Um. So, so I I think there's reasonable support for this, um, but I think yeah, I agree. It makes sense to test this. I I think the best way forward is potentially to try and, as Warren says, share the current updated chart we're thinking of with the list. Uh, and I and agree that having that discussion framed uh, makes sense. And then for Warren and I to also at the same time. Uh, liaise with ISG to make sure that what's being um, what's being proposed makes sense and and gets agreement on that side as well. Um, Robert, uh, which list are you talking about? Is it the list um, in uh, the IoT Ops or IoT Directorate? Uh, IoT Ops is the one I was thinking of. Okay. We're discussing the charter. Okay, maybe, um, yeah, maybe, um, would you be able to also send an email to the IoT director at least uh, pointing to the IoT of charter discussion? Because I think not everybody has attended this meeting and it will be helpful. Yes, agree that sure. Sense. And, and, sure. And again, there wasn't a meeting yet. This was still more a, you know, discussion on is it possible to even form this sort of a group? I think people might have the impression that this is a lot further along than it is and not just a, you know, hey, we want to try and see if something like this is even doable. Um, but yeah. I, believe, I believe Eric already sent the announcement of the um, IoT Ops list and the charter discussion to the IoT directorate list. Thank you. I thought he had, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, I did indeed. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much to everyone at the CFPFA for this proposed working group. Um, some additional comment? Okay, um, so there is new plan ITA, RTA, IoT activities that you are aware of that you want to share? No, okay. Uh, updates from other IoT groups? Well, I'm seeing here that uh, Michael, uh, you uh, put information about IoT Security Foundation. So thank you for that. Do you want to provide some comments? Um, I think it's self-explanatory. Suit work was wonderful to have. Um, and I think it's gonna be very well received. Um, uh, so let's get it out as quickly as we can. Um, and um, uh, I think that we're finally going to get some regulatory uh, push on things. And I think that we will see um, an influx of new interest from places. So um in trying to understand how to do it right and how to do the how to solve some of the problems that they some uh, a number of of sectors have uh and they don't know that they have it in common so um iot ops will be kind of useful when the regular regulatory push happens because they'll be looking around like what do i do now and uh, we have protocols they have problems Do they take some actions point for the ITF for respect with the foundation? No active, active, act, no action points at this point. Okay. Thank you very much, Michael. Okay, if there is no more information or some additional comments, do you want to share with us? Um, I will mention okay. that earlier this month um, that uh, so NIST earlier this year, a couple months ago, put out a security baseline for consumer IoT that was NIST IR 8259 and 8259A. 
Um, it, the 8259 is the one that is basically things to think about, and 8289A is the actual uh, baseline with actual, you know, proposed requirements, and then various other orgs, uh, like eight or nine different orgs that had specifications that met those requirements. Uh, earlier this month, uh, NIST organized a workshop to uh, spread knowledge about that and to get some community discussion. And I was one of the invited panelists. And so um, I just wanted to highlight that this workshop happened um, and that there's a document on cybersecurity risks and consumer home IoT products. Um, that document was pointed to the suit working group, uh, I think, at a previous IETF meeting, 108, I think. Um, since it was published before then, and the workshop that NIST hosted was just this month, last week. Um, I'll post a link into the code EMD. Okay, thank you very much, Dave, for this update. Um, thank you very much to the people that uh, helped us uh, with the minutes and completing this etherpad. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, Thank you very much for attending. So this session was recorded. I will stop the recording now.